All right. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Uh, I'm sure most of you know who I am, Erin Barton. So tonight I, I have some really exciting news that I'm going to share with everybody in a little while. But I watched a sermon this morning and it really got me thinking about a lot of stuff and, and what it was about was being prepared. And so it was really deep for like maybe some of our jewels and people who have been with us for a long time from the beginning. But I, what I wanted to do is just use parts of it and talk to some of you guys about being prepared because we don't talk about that a lot on our team page. A lot of what we say is like personal growth is important and growing is important and you've got to read books and you have to do this and you have to do that. But we don't really talk about being prepared. And so I wanted to... Um, I took some notes, and so I wanted to just go over this with you. So a lot of times when you're being prepared for this business, so you might not see, you know, I see a lot of you working, working, and maybe you're sending out a lot of messages, and you're not getting responses, or you're, you feel like you're not going as fast as you think you should be going, or maybe you're not in the place that you want to be yet. And... Um, a lot of times that is because maybe we're not as prepared as we need to be. So a lot of times, one of the quotes he said was, oftentimes there's no reward for the moments that, you're, that you are preparing. So what you really need to be doing when you're not sending out messages is watching videos, attending calls, showing up for groups, showing up um, to, speak on calls or when you're asked to give your testimonial, even when you don't have a person there, right? So you're thinking, well, why am I going to give my testimonial in the seven day challenge? I didn't even get anybody to come to the seven day challenge. But so a lot of times we run that or I'm busy, so I'm not going to hop on the team call or I don't have um, a new customer. So I'm not going to go on to this new ambassador training. But really what we need to be doing is attending all these things. So if you're really trying to grow your business, you want to be preparing yourself for growing your business. So you need to show up at these things even when you might not have an immediate reward, right? You might not have the new ambassador on the call. You might not um, have someone in the seven day when you're giving your testimonial, you know, all those things. So reading books and practicing essentially is what I'm talking about. But um, the thing about that that's kind of hard is we don't get rewarded for that necessarily. You know, no one's standing there posting on Facebook going, yay, uh, Jamie watched two videos today. She's growing. That's exciting. You know, we're not all getting that feel good feeling from doing this work. And it's, Sometimes it's hard work. Sometimes it's painful work. Like sometimes it's stuff that we don't even like doing. Um, you know, I've got, I know some of you aren't readers. I know some of you, you know, get distracted or whatever. And so I just want to remind you, and I'm going to do a better job as a leader of making posts about that so we can cheer each other on for doing the work that's not necessarily giving us the instant reward. Um, another quote that he said, is you can't expect the class to look like the calling. So when you're in class, when you're doing all these things, it doesn't look like what you're picturing a jewel to look like, or a gold to look like, or a senior gold to look like. You know, you're sitting here in the thick of it, and that doesn't feel like what you imagine the outcome to be. And that's pretty common. So these are just things that um, he was talking about. And he also said, if you knew what the purpose of the work was, you would do it without any question, right? So I'm gonna to get to that point a little bit later, but I wanted to kind of put this into a story to explain to you what it looks like, okay? So I've told my son's story before, but I'm gonna tell a little bit again, just to give you guys an idea, and some of you haven't heard his story. So my son, is a soccer player, right? When he was 10 years old, he went to live with his dad, who was a professional soccer player, and he had never played soccer before. 
his dad was a coach at the time at a one of the more elite clubs in Charlotte. And so my son went there to try out for the team, right? Well, he was terrible, guys. He sucked. He was not a good player. He didn't know any of the sport, really. He never played. Um, they basically gave him a position on the lowest team as a favor to his dad, right? Now, mind you, he has athlete genes, right? He has the right seed, so to speak, okay? But he's terrible. So he proceeded to practice two or three practices a night because he decided he wanted to follow in his dad's footsteps. So he trained and trained and trained and he sacrificed, you know, family time. He sacrificed his friends. He sacrificed going on dates, going to dances, party, you know, having sleepovers and all these things that kids do when they're in high school. He put all of it to the side because he was practicing, practicing and practicing. And finally, when he turned 15, he had the opportunity to travel over to England. So he travels over to England and gets recognized, right? The team says, you know, we want to we wanna sign you on a scholarship. So he's all excited. He's like, yes, all that I've been working for, I'm going to get signed on this scholarship, right? But he has to wait another year because they can't sign him until he's 16. So he has to go home and practice and practice and practice without being able to play. By this point, the team that he was playing on was not up to the caliber that he was at. So it wasn't really fun for him, but he had to push himself mentally to keep practicing because otherwise he could lose that opportunity, right? So last summer, he signs his contract, moves to England. Well, also in the meantime, he had to do a whole extra year of high school at one time. So he could be graduated by the time he turned 16, like by that following year. So he turned 17 in October, but he had to be graduated by June. So he does a whole extra year of homework, goes to England. He's so excited. He's going to get in onto the team. He's going to get to play, follow his dreams. They're telling us, you'll know if he's going to go pro by Christmas, right? So we have a lawyer that's filling out his paperwork and his dad's British. So we're thinking, obviously he's going to get citizenship pretty easily, whatever. Well, three months goes by, no citizenship, right? And he can't actually sign his contract without a passport from England. So he's over there, he's training. Now he's on, got a dietitian watching him, so he can't eat candy bars, he can't have chips. Now his diet is super strict, plus he has to train, and he's not getting paid now. <laughs> and he can't play. So finally after three months we find out, okay, um, all he has to do is apply for a passport and he'll get it. So we're like, oh, that's so stupid. We should have done that months ago. So we apply for the passport. Two months later, he gets the passport. So we're like, awesome. Now he can play. He still can't play because now he has to get international clearance. So then they have to send all this paperwork to FIFA and then FIFA has to set out the application and they have to approve it, right? And they get it all in time. They only do this like twice a year. So they get all the paperwork in on time. And here he sits, it's eight months later nine months later and he's now getting paid but he still can't play yet he still has to go in he has to train with all the boys that are playing you know they're all benefiting from the practicing that they're doing he's still not so he's still in this waiting pattern and literally at this point he's just waiting for them to click a button to say yep he has clearance he can play so my point in this whole story is that sometimes we're doing all this work and we're not necessarily seeing the reward of what we want, but, but it will pay off for him because whatever timing that God has laid out for him, he must need this time to be preparing himself or like plowing his fields or planting his seeds so that when he does get to play, he is going to be amazing. But he's putting in all this work, like we put in all this work into our business. You know, we pour into our businesses, we spend all this time, and sometimes it takes a long time for us to see the reward or outcome that we want. But the training and the practice is super important. So that leads me to the purpose part, okay? 
<clears throat> I'm going to be done with this soon, so <laughs> don't get too bored. So I was thinking about this today, and we have a team full of tons of people who are helpers, right? All you guys, your moms, your helpers, a lot of you are yellows. You will do anything and everything for somebody else before you'll do it for yourself, right? Can I get a head nod here? Pretty sure I'm right on that. And so what happens is if we don't figure out what our purpose in this business is that is bigger than ourselves, we're not going to do this work. And that's the reality of it because I'm the same way. I maybe don't hop on this call because, oh, someone needs something or, oh, I got to do this for my husband or, oh, now my daughter needs me to run to town and do this for her or, oh, you know, something else. Something can always come up for you, the helper person, to go help somebody else. So what I feel like is we have to figure out what it is that we're doing this business for that's bigger than just doing it for ourselves, because then we'll show up. You're going to show up when your purpose is for something more than just you. Okay. So the last thing I'm going to say about this is something that he said that really struck me. And he said, the bottom line is your checks are based more on the quality of your soil than they are on the seed that you plant in it. So even though like with my son, even though he has all the genes, he's got all the talent. If he did not, practice and nurture his soil, he would not be in England right now. And that's goes the same for all of us. Okay. So now on to the fun stuff. <laughs> um, okay. This month we've got some really exciting stuff going on. I'm putting on two VIP events. So if you didn't make it last month to the VIP events, they're super fun. Okay. They are for you to reach out and directly invite people that you feel would be interested in the business, okay? It's gonna be by invite only. So I don't necessarily want you, I'm not saying you can't post it on Facebook, but the real focus of this is to reach out personally and invite that person so they feel special or they feel um, important to you, okay? Our first event is gonna be on the 13th at 9 p.m. Eastern, I'm gonna, post graphics and stuff. I just didn't want to do it till after the call. Our speakers on that call are Emily Roberts and Helen McFadden. Okay. Two awesome diamonds. If you don't know who they are, Emily Roberts was a military wife. She's a stay at home mom. She's young. Um, an amazing lady. She's very passionate about her family and God. And she is incredible. Helen is older. She had done network marketing before. So if you have people who have done other businesses before or something like that, <clears throat> she'd be a great person for them to listen to. Um, she's big into helping like the elderly and things like that. So she's got some, she's a, been with the company too from like the very beginning or pretty early on. So those will be our guest speakers on that night. We're having two giveaways for this event. One for a guy and one for a girl. <clears throat> and you are allowed to use those to advertise. So we will be giving away a baby blue coach wristlet and a silver Yeti tumbler, like a highball tumbler for the guy. So if there's a guy or a girl, we want to make sure we, we weren't, I said, I was talking to Shelby about it and I'm like, whatever, they can give the wristlet to their wife. <laughs> but you know, we decided to go for a gift for the guy. So that's what's on, the, that's coming up. We're going to start promoting it hopefully right away. I'll post the graphics of the team page you guys can use. Number two, we have a new ambassador gift pack, business building pack. I posted the graphic of it. This is for anyone who joined last month or joins this month can be eligible to win. They have to have their convenience order on and they have to have their 100 PV. So if they're new this month, they're going to need to get their 100 PV over the welcome pack. If they're from last month, they just need to qualify. Um, the next contest I'm doing is the seven day challenge. So whoever gets the most people into the seven day challenge is going to win their, they're going to go in a Kendra Scott piece of jewelry. 
And that is going to be up to you. Like you can choose a bracelet, earrings, or a necklace. Okay. Because some people don't have their ears pierced and all that. So I didn't pre-purchase that one because I wasn't sure. Um, the next thing is I have a leader gift out there, which is a hot pink Kate Spade wallet. And that is for anyone gold or above that has the highest percentage of growth in points this month. Okay, and I'm doing it based on percentage, so it's fair for everybody. Um, I'm also going to do one more contest. But I'm not going to start till mid-month, and that is going to be a white line contest. Um, we have two preset messages that you'll be able to send out to anybody who has white lines on your team. I'm going to suggest that you just do one through threes, because if we all do one through threes, we're not going to be duplicating too many people. Um, sending double or messages or whatever. But the way the message reads is we're having a $100 Visa gift card drawing. Your 20 PV, you know, you can, you'll write in there what their PV is. So the first one is for 20 PV and less. So anyone that's 80 PV or more, it goes through the products that they can order to qualify. So it lists out the products. Like you can try this, 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 or this. And then the other one is for, I think, 60 PV or more something like that, but we'll be doing a $100 Visa gift card giveaway to the customer. And then I'm also going to do another Kendra Scott piece for the people who participate and get some other people back. So that's going to be the last contest, but I'm not going to roll that out till mid month because I really want to focus on the seven day challenge and I want to focus on the VIP event. So we're gonna get those knocked out. The second VIP event is gonna be on the 27th. <clears throat> I don't have finality on both speakers yet, so I'm not gonna release that until I have the other speaker nailed down. So that's that. Um, the last thing I wanna cover, it's a little bit more serious, but not too bad, is the convenience order, okay? These are really, really important, guys. When we're signing people up, we need to have them get their convenience order because number one, the statistics are if whoever you have joined this month, if they don't sign with a convenience order in place, the chances of them reordering are only 20%. So basically when I think about the convenience order, if you're not signing someone with a convenience order, guys, you're signing a retail customer. I mean, that's essentially what you're doing. They're not even preferred because they're not even agreeing to get their products a second time. So you're just taking a retail customer and you're signing them as an ambassador. So we need to kind of change our mindset on this and really get focused on making sure we're setting up, well, we're preparing our people, okay? We're talking about being prepared tonight and we're not even preparing our own new ambassadors. We need to make sure they're getting their, their products the next month. And also maybe they, okay, maybe you're signing someone who doesn't have a lot of money, but if that's the case and the intention is to go in and do the business, you better have them turned on because they they need to be open. And that's how you need to explain it. Like you're not gonna, you can't open a store without unlocking the door you know, essentially, and I know that a convenience order isn't required anymore, but really that's part of the business. Being turned on, being active is part of our business, and so we wanna make sure we're setting people up for success. Um, every event and every contest that I do from here on forward, you will be required to have a convenience order in place in order to participate. Um, that includes VIP events, seven-day challenges, all of the, you know, to be eligible to win any gifts, you need to have your convenience order on. I think it's really important. Um, I just think we need to set people up for success and we need to set our teams up for success and ourselves up for success. I want you guys to be successful. You went out and did all the work to get someone to join your business. And then if you're not keeping them set up on a convenience order, the next month you have to do that work all over again. So. Let's try to change our mindset on that and really work on that this month, okay? Um, that's all I have, unless anyone has any questions. I'm super excited about the event. 
and all the contests. So I'm happy to give all this stuff away. I got some good goodies this month. So um, thank you guys for coming on tonight. I hope I didn't take up too, too much of your time and preach on too long, but I really wanted to get that out there tonight. So thanks so much, guys. Have a great night. Bye.